I was reading that a high school journalism teacher was teaching her students how to decipher tweets and fake news, and that's something that five years ago we, we wouldn't have even been having that conversation. So. Yeah, I have a, a really strange theory about this whole thing about fake news, <clears throat> is that, I don't even know how to say this, because uh, I, I think Trump is, is kind of a breakthrough cultural character. I, I don't have any... Uh, fond feelings for him, and I could go on and on about that, but he is an eccentric, creative person. He is the most uh, amazing producer I've ever seen uh, in my life, and I can't even imagine one more powerful than he is. A uh, few years ago, people around the world didn't even know who he was. Uh, people in New York knew who he was, but mostly in a negative way. Uh, but in today's world, whether you're in Thailand, like I was a few weeks ago, or whether you're in an island off the coast of Samoa, <laughs> or in Latvia, or Estonia, or Albania, you can't pick up a paper that doesn't have the word Trump in it. And his ability to get the media to do what he wants them to do is almost infinite. Uh, it's astonishing. And people say, well, he's a liar. But the more I hear that over the last few years, the more I start thinking what's really going on, and my wife would kill me for saying this, uh, is that he is changing or maybe awakening us to our strange views of truth. Because I don't think he knows this. I don't think it's conscious on his part. But he instinctively knows that truth is completely relative. And if a society decides that it's not relative, then that is a social decision. It's like the continent of reasoning saying, we're going to agree that this is true. But he's saying, whatever is true, the only thing that's true is what I'm saying at the moment. And that's the way I look at it. It's true. And he's got a lot of people who believe that even though some of it sounds just plain crazy. But isn't that the way creative people always sound at the beginning? So I'm, I'm afraid uh, and kind of excited about the fact that we may be going into a whole new era of post-truth uh, era. I mean, no one ever quite answered Pilate's question that he asked 2,000 years ago, what is truth? Uh, but I think the, the world of Trump is a world that is getting closer to answering that than we've ever been before. Because what if we just decide that to dispense with the concept of truth? Uh, we, a lot of things would change, but they're already changing because of him. And uh, I think it's a very strange and troubling situation, but it's also kind of exhilarating because maybe it's time that we, we do have a different view of, of what truth is. And maybe we can learn something from the whole thing. So I don't know if this has anything to do with our, you know, with our interview. But well, if we look at at, at writing and and fake news, I mean, if you look at is it Randolph Hearst or it, Rand, yeah. so, Randolph Hearst? I, I think he would stage different things back in the day where you know a woman would faint on the street and then they would write about it, and it was it was part of just generating content. The thing is, we didn't have the internet back then. So it wouldn't spread as fast and it couldn't create chaos in other countries or here. And then it turns no. out it's not even well, true. Well, when, when you look at what's happened here, um, the American people decided with their votes um, one way or the other. I mean, I know it was the Electoral College, not the popular vote. But a lot of Americans voted for a reality show over somebody who was just a little too truthful or whatever, little too lo logical, little too much of the continent of reason, uh, they voted for the most entertaining of the two characters. So they voted for entertainment, basically. And, and that's scary. I mean, it's all these other actors are talking about running, and some of them already have run, and actresses, etc. And uh, the blurring of politics and entertainment is very dangerous, but what if it changes the world? And what if it changes the world for not only the worse, but what if it changes it for the better? You know, what if a, 
an enlightened guy like George Clooney becomes president. Oh, that'd be nice. And he gets elected because he's George Clooney. Gets elected because he's an entertainer. You know, what about, what if a guy named like Ronald Reagan became president? <laughs> he was a great communicator though. Yeah, well he was a great <laughs> actor, great mm -hmm. communicator. You know, he didn't need to write his lines. You know, he, he knew how to deliver his lines. So I think all of that is very interesting and it's, it's about, it all is about how the creative worlds intertwine with our daily existence. You know, and, and you, watch, you watch the broadcasters and I try to watch Fox News once in a while and I find it very difficult to watch it. But then when I come back to watch CNN or MSNBC, I realize they must find, you know, I understand how they feel that's hard to watch because both sides of the coin are manipulating views of reality to, to get messages across. And that's what writing is all about. Isn't that what creativity is all about? Like when a painter paints something like Rothberg, who would have thought you could have painted a painting with no figures in it at all, just color. And um, that's the world we're going through. So it's, it's kind of like we're on yet another frontier of, of the human mind's evolution. And uh, we'll see what happens from it. Uh, I'm afraid that certain things are going to be gone for good after this presidency. Uh, we may not ever get um, any candidate who isn't a visionary in one way or the other. And you know, Trump is a visionary even if you think his vision is dark. He clearly is a visionary. He doesn't like the way things are and he's trying to break them up. And only when things are break, broken up can they be put back together again. So he's a spoiler. And uh, the world is, you know, history is filled with spoilers and huge catastrophes and huge changes for the better have occurred because of spoilers. And uh, who knows where it's going, but I think it's interesting that the, you know, that the entertainment world being mixed with the rea world of reality is gonna make it much more challenging. And I think the internet is largely responsible for that because you know, the first thing, if you, you have a certain medical condition, you instantly Google and you, first thing you read, you know, you go, oh my God. <laughs> I'm gonna but, die. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna die or I'm gonna die in this really bizarre way. And then you read something else that makes it look like everybody has this problem and it's not a big issue. And then you keep reading and you get more and more, you know, confused. And you wait, you go, wait a minute, this isn't making sense. Like everything is out there and how do you organize it? And faced with that, you know, you are facing the issue of creativity because the creator is the guy who, you know, or the girl who <laughs> looks at things and goes, this whole thing's a mess. I'm gonna make something spectacular out of it. I'm gonna make sense out of it. And I think that's why the world is getting more, you know, more and more interesting. Where it's going, I don't know, uh, you know, but it's, it's going to be interesting.